Uh, good morning, guys. So um, I wanted to cover the the, um, the MVC pattern. It's something I've wanted to do for a long time on YouTube. Um, it's a uh, it's a a pattern that's used everywhere, not just with PHP. I'm going to be showing you how to use it with PHP and the basic layout for creating a, a web framework. Okay, using MVC. So. Um, I'm going to start off in this tutorial just with the real, real basics. This is going to be a multi, uh, um, a multi-video tutorial. Uh, I just don't want to do everything in a like a one or two-hour span. Let's just break it down little by little. Okay, so most uh, web frameworks that use PHP have a index.php file which is the only file you actually execute or I shouldn't say that that uh, that you actually request as, as far as the page everything else gets routed there using typically using HT access um, and some sort of router functionality but that'll be the page the index page is the one you're actually that's going to deliver the response back to you okay so what I've done is I've gone ahead and set up a um, a folder structure, okay, and I'm gonna cover that in this in this tutorial. So we're gonna have our library, okay, and what I, what the library is gonna contain is all our core application files. So um, the the anything that we extend as far as controllers models uh, views all of the um, all of the core files are going to be contained in the library and we could probably even um, uh, put them all inside of a uh, break it down a little bit more and go something like uh, core and then go ahead and drop uh, our application there we go like that, and then that way we can also have a vendors file. You know, vendors. And so if we wanted to add Zend, you know, we could create a little Zend um, directory in here and add any Zend classes, or if we wanted to use Symphony or any classes from any other vendors, we could, you know, create their folders in here and store them in there. Uh, but we can keep our core files in here all right so I'm gonna call this I actually built an MVC framework uh, it was actually right around this hold on one sec I have my son okay sorry about that but we're back um, so where was I um, I was talking about the the, um, the folder structure or the directory structure so um, let's go into our app directory because this is where we're going to contain all our apps um, and what I mean by apps is more of a um, sometimes it's beneficial to break down our um, our application into smaller chunks so if we had a blog we might want to create uh, a folder where we keep all the blog related stuff so um, we might have we might want to have like a list view a um, blog like an item view blog item view maybe something where we uh, should display them by tags um, so we would contain all those say we would go ahead and create a new blog folder and then in here so I've actually um I'm gonna use an example from an application I'm working on excuse me I think I'm going to sneeze uh, <coughs> all right <coughs> cool <coughs> Anyways, so I'm actually working on an application for my wife's website. Um, I'm using Joomla right now, just because it's <clears throat> it's really fast, it's easy. I'm I'm really good with Joomla, and I actually like it. I mean, I think the 3.0 version of the Joomla framework is a, is a big improvement. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that I was still using 1.5. Uh, I think it was maybe. Uh, well, it's actually been over a year now. Um, 
Yeah, but I mean, it's still, it feels like it wasn't that long ago, maybe a year and a half now. But um, in, 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 in that time, we've had Juma, you know, 1.6, 2.5, and now we're at 3.0. And uh, it's just a huge improvement. So um, I, I like it. The only area, and you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that. <clears throat> so anyways, um, I've taken, a, I've modeled this, I've modeled this a lot after I have a son. So, I'll be, okay, I am back. Sorry about that. Um, it's what happens when you have a five-year-old uh, and you're trying to get him ready for school. Anyways, um, so uh, I was talking about where where I took my ideas from. So I took a part of it from Joomla. I took part of it from uh, like Code Igniter, because not Code Igniter, um, Yi, uh, and part of this from Zend as well. Like I really like. Um, um, Actually, I think in Zen borrowed a little bit from Joomla, to be honest, as, uh, now that uh, the Zen components are, are like modularized. So um, I think they actually borrowed a lot, or just that from it. <laughs> uh, no, it's not an accusation. It's just uh, something that I, I found kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, so let me go back to this uh, to this folder structure because right now I have this uh, Napa folder so Napa uh, this is what I, I was talking about as well it's uh, it's an application I'm working on for my wife's website um, it's kind of uh, a directory sort of deal so um, I'm gonna use that as an example for this going forward um, I, I'd like to see how we can rebuild the website using just a, a really simple uh, MVC framework okay so um, you'll see that I have a, um, a folder for my controllers uh, <clears throat> I have a folder for helpers and we will talk more about each individual type of file going forward okay um, we have a folder for our models and uh, templates and our views um, and okay, and then we also we're gonna have um, in each um, in each application, or I should say, in each component, we'll have a PHP file named after the component, and that'll be our Bootstrap. I mean, we could name it just Bootstrap, but um, I we'll just uh, we'll just go with just the name of the component. We can. It's gonna be really interesting because um, it was about a year ago, a little over a year now. Maybe it was more. Gosh, time flies really quickly. I built um, the MVC, the original MVC framework, um, but um, I kind of ditched it. I got busy with other stuff. Uh, I, I really started to focus on uh, JavaScript and jQuery. So, um, anyways, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I've always wanted to do this tutorial. I've always wanted uh, to. Uh, I like building my own frameworks. It just it. It gives I, the reason I like it is because it gives me an edge um, in understanding uh, what frameworks are all about, all the pieces that go into them. It gives me a lot of appreciation too for the work that other people have done, um, whether it's uh, the the people at Zend or you know the Joomla team or the guys at um, and gals. I, I think there's a few gals on uh, WordPress, and so I just I really. Uh, you know, it gives me a sense of appreciation. Plus, I think it gives me a lot of insights on on uh, what it's all about. So um, we'll cover this a little bit more. Another thing I want to I want you to notice too is I'm going to be using JSON configurations. Now, I really like JSON. I think it's a really easy um, uh, data structure, and uh, I, I I just I, I like it a lot. Um, I could use one of the things I, I, I find really annoying actually about the new um, Zen framework is uh, is their configurations are done mainly with uh, with um, um, arrays and it just looks really messy. I don't know. I don't. I mean, it's very similar to JSON, I guess, but it, it just looks really messy. Uh, we might have to. 
create some sort of class. I'm not sure yet, but I, I know that I've, I, you can get away with just a, a quick JSON file. That should be more than enough uh, to start off. I mean, we're going to start off simple, and then if we need to refactor, we will refactor. So another thing that I want to uh, point out to you, too, is that rather than, um, than keeping our index file here, because if we were to deploy this into a testing environment, then our library and our app folder would all be public. So, you know, let's go ahead and make a public HTML or just a public folder. And we'll put our index file in there. We're also going to put uh, an HT access file in there. So let's just add a new HT access dot HT access. And we can come back to this later. We, we'll put nothing in it right now, but just note that we will have some sort of uh, HT access file that'll help us reroute everything to our index.php. <clears throat> and you know, one of the other benefits of doing it this way, and this is something that Zen does, is uh, it keeps uh, it keeps all the un all the core files out of the public view. You don't you don't need people seeing or accessing those files. So it's just easier to lock them out and uh, just include what you need uh, in the index file or throughout your application. <clears throat> or, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> we'll also need a um, configuration file, some sort of a bootstrap, but we can get to that in a few minutes. Um, I also, I guess uh, we have a little bit of time, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with our index file. So in our index file, what I'm going to do is just, uh, and I could do this in another file, and I might still uh, as we progress. So the, the, there's going to be lots of refactorings here. So as we progress, we can um, we can move stuff around. But I want to I want to show you just some basic things that we'll be doing. So. Uh, the directory separator in PHP for me is just like a really long, um, um, something really long to type, you know, like, so I, I'm just going to shorten that to DS, which I borrowed again from, you know, Joomla. Um, I like that you do that. I think they took that out in 3.0. Um, anyways, um, or they deprecated it. God, I should know that. Um, anyways. <clears throat> Uh, most of uh, most of the time, um, we'll we'll actually probably abstract this even further, but um, and then I also uh, um, set another um, another um, what's the word I'm looking for here? An another constant. Excuse me, I'm a little tired. It's seven in the morning, or it's eight now. Wow. Okay. Um, I set another constant for the directory uh, that we're in right now, but we're going to change this. Um, and let me give you a little brief tour. Now, right now I'm using require, uh, require once or whatever, uh, or require. Um, and we'll talk about the benefits of using require over require once. And you know, uh, we're going to, we, what we're also going to do is create our own auto loader. So, um, this is just to get us up and running for those of you who just want to see how this pattern works. Like, I'm going to do it bare bones, um, <laughs> all, uh, no, um, uh, no clearing of any variables. Uh, you know, we're, it's just going to be absolute bare bones. Let's just take a look at the pattern. And then those of you who want to keep going forward, we're going to do unit tests and we're going to do... Um, um, uh, we're gonna do this application right just get a nice little framework going um, if you want to use it on a small site we'll see if we can get it to uh, a really stable uh, deployment um, I've got lots of things to do but I, I'm, uh, and, I, and, I and I may get a little slow down on, on, on putting these uh, tutorials out but um, I am gonna be consistent I'm gonna try to get them out and then I'm gonna share this code on github so those of you who you know, want to continue and play around with it some more, you'll be free to do so as well. So um, let's take a look at just the, the first thing that I did here. Um, the first thing I did here, uh, well, you know what, let's save this for another tutorial. That way, 
that way uh, we can modularize the, the progress. Um, I think this is a good place to stop. So um, there you have it. This is the, the, the beginnings of the, the directories and how they're laid out. And in the next tutorial, I will talk about um, the just the very, very, very basics of MVC and just kind of get the pattern going. It's actually not that hard. We could probably do it in in uh, 20 minutes. I think we can we can build it out. So um, the next tutorial, that's what that's going to be. So thank you and cheers.